morning we will be exhorted by Brother Caleb Barnes. The title to his remarks are When I Am Weak, Then I Am Strong. And he's asked that in preparation for his remarks that we should read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended by you, for I was not at all inferior to these superior super apostles, even though I am nothing. With that, let's turn our attention to Brother Caleb. Disclosure: This talk I wrote um, probably about three months ago, the last time I was up to speak. Um, so I had to go back in and change a few things. Um, but the topic is still prevalent for Craig and I, and hopefully um, it will be prevalent for, for other people as well. So this morning I'd like to share a few thoughts that Craig and I back then and, and now um, working on based off the verse that the reader just wrote us. Uh, some of the things I'd like to focus on this morning is my strength is made perfect in weakness. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And I will glory my weakness let the power of Christ may dwell in me. So again, this morning I'd like to focus on these concepts and really my struggles with this topic. Um, look at how we interpret God's will for our life. And, and finally look at a few individuals and in scriptures who handle difficult times in their life. And hopefully, as always, at the end of this exhortation, we might be a little bit uplifted and we might have um, some thoughts that we can think on, and hopefully for myself, feeling a little bit less guilty about our initial reactions uh, when we come across a struggle. And hopefully we get a pattern of, of turning to God with, uh, with the proper mindset. So there are a few concepts in Scripture that we've all read and that we've all learned um, throughout our lives, and these can be things we picked up in Sunday school, things that we learned during meeting, um, a lot of these are how we spend our free time, how we interact with others, uh, we all know these, forgive others and you'll be forgiven, don't focus too much time on your job, social life, material possessions, um, always give unto others, always be mindful of what you say and do, and these concepts, although they're straightforward to understand, uh, they're not easy to put in practice. Um, but again, they are easy to understand. But one of the concepts that we've been struggling with, or that I've really been struggling with, um, is the idea that experiencing hardships makes you stronger, uh, which seems simple in thought, right? By getting through tough times, we become better equipped to deal with our trials. We're more empathetic to others in similar situations, and perhaps we're more exposed to realities of life, and we're less vulnerable in the future. But in the middle of our battles, or even after, this concept seems it couldn't be any more untrue. Personally, instead of feeling like I'm able to withstand more, after going through a tough experience, I found myself that I doubt more, I feel more uncertain, and I question God's will for my life. I feel less equipped to deal with tough times, more vulnerable to anything that comes up, and weaker and more inward focusing than ever. I don't feel I'm able to be supportive of others as I should, and instead I spend a lot of time trying to deal with my own circumstances rather than those around me. So the question being then, why does this verse tell us when we are weak, we are made strong? The Bible tells us over and over that afflictions and trials are for our spiritual benefit. In verse 8 of this chapter it says, For this thing I have sought the Lord thrice, that it might depart of me. A lot of times I find myself praying for a trial to end without thinking that God still have, may, still have more for me to learn. 
I really do a lot of times struggle with my own mentality when I go through a difficult time. I used to think that it showed a lack of faith to ask help for God. It showed that I couldn't handle difficulties in my life. And obviously we know that is the wrong mindset. And based off this verse, we do know that it is okay to ask God for help in these difficult times. And we know whenever Jesus was in the garden that he prayed three times for the cup to be removed. But all the while, his main focus was that the Lord's will be done, not his own. So even though God does accept our prayers, sometimes he answers with wrath, and sometimes he denies in love. Verse 9 of the chapter tells us that my grace is sufficient for thee. Even though God does not always remove our troubles, he has given us a perfect mediator who is our support in times of weakness in his son. Probably the most impactful example of this uh, in my life has been over the past couple of years. Uh, many of you know that Corinne and I uh, tried very hard to start a family for quite a while. Um, a lot of thought and prayer went into achieving this. Um, quite a few times we experienced excitement of finding out the movie Parents, uh, but then came pregnancy loss. There were several times during this that I was very unsure of God's will for us. The scripture tells us that we are to go forth and multiply, and to raise children to serve the Lord. And if we follow these commandments, scripture tells us in Psalm 37, verse 4, if we delight in the Lord, then he will give us the desires of our heart. Psalm 20, verse 4, let God grant you what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Luckily, Corinne now is uh, close to 20 weeks pregnant, so God has blessed us and answered our prayers. But even still, um, I still find ways to doubt. I still find ways that I struggle with this. Um, I still have fears, which I know is, is a difficult thing for me to grasp because it ha we have been blessed. Um, but there's still that doubt and still that fear. And we know God's will for us. Well, again, simple in how the Bible tells us to act and think. It's not so clearly laid out for every individual. And we know that interpreting God's will in our lives is pretty much impossible. Quickly, I want to go over a few examples of people in the Bible who faced burdens that seemed insurmountable to them at the time um, and how they overcame them. The first quick example I like to look at is that of Joseph. Although there is no recorded sin of Joseph in the Bible, he was constantly being oppressed and mistreated and really through no fault of his own. He was loved by his father the most. His brothers hated him, and they sold him into slavery. Joseph was sold into slavery where he spent 11 years as the head of Potiphar's house. After fleeing temptation and not giving in to temptation, Joseph was then wrongfully accused and thrown into prison and served as head of the prisoners for over two years. Through God's help, Joseph interpreted a dream for Pharaoh and became second in command of all of Egypt. Joseph's path was not always easy. It did not always seem deserved, but one thing remained true for Joseph, and that was his faith in God. That is what strengthened him, and that is really what allowed Joseph to overcome his trials. God recognized in Joseph that even though he may have felt abandoned, Joseph never once turned away from God. The next example I can look at is Paul. Uh, we know how... Paul's life started off. Paul was uh, a very ruthless ruler in the temple uh, and personally oversaw the death of many of Jesus' apostles. And most notably, the last one, uh, he was mentioned by name at the stoning of Stephen. Not long after, though, we know the story of Paul. He was on his way to Emmaus, where he was blinded and then converted. After his conversion, Paul quickly turned into one of the most influential and important members of spreading God's word in the first century. We know from this chapter that Paul did, though, live with a great obstacle. Paul mentions verse 70 and verse 7 that there was given to him a thorn in the flesh. We're never really specifically told whether this was a mental or physical affliction, only that it was unbearable for Paul. I believe we're never really told that. It's because without an answer, it really could be used to describe anything that we might deal with on a daily basis, anything that causes us pain, anything that causes us to turn away from God. By leaving it open in it, God's acknowledging that this thorn could be anything that we face. 
Paul was able to be successful in his following of God because he understood that it was through God's immediate grace. And although he did not receive it, he continued in the Lord knowing that his will would be fulfilled, just like Joseph. The last aspect of this talk I'd like to focus on um, is the role that we play in this process and the role that we play as brothers and sisters to each other. For examining the examples above, there are key points that we've pulled from both of these men, even though they both went about it differently. Throughout Joseph's whole life in dealing with his misfortunes, uh, there's never once a recorded prayer. There's never once where he, he prayed to God. It was always a continual conversation, or it was through dreams. But again, there's never a recorded prayer of it being too much or for Joseph to ask God to take away his misery. We know that Joseph showed ultimate faith in every situation he was put in. We know that Paul was a little bit of a different story, and to me, Paul is a little bit more relatable. Um, because Paul did, got, did ask for God to remove his pain. Through Paul's example, we know there is the ability to express our concern to God, and that sometimes things are just too unbearable for us to move forward. Paul showed us that we can ask God to remove our trials, even though they could be beneficial for us. And we know that Paul did not show a lack of faith by asking God to remove this thorn. And I think it's an important lesson for us to learn. Again, I sometimes find myself thinking that if I'm asking for an easier outcome, that I'm showing God that I don't believe in Him or that I don't believe He will look out for me. But again, there is no harm in asking that for God. Because we have countless examples of faithful men and women in Scripture who did cry out to the Lord for comfort. And again, this brings back the importance of, like Joseph, not just praying to God, but having a continual dialogue with God so that our first thought is on Him, regardless of what situation we're in. I think it's very easy to sit back and say, uh, well, it's part of God's plan. That's what His will is. That's what's going to happen. Um, that's not something easy to understand. And for myself, that's a very difficult thing to hear. Um, we heard that a lot over the past couple of years, and it was it's a very different concept to understand because it's, it's something that, that we say to each other and we know it's true, but it's, it's not something that you can really grasp. But again, in times of need, that's when our brothers and sisters are needed the most. And we know that Sunday is important in so many ways, not just for why we are here for the memorial table, but for support of each other. Oftentimes, coming here, you might not be in the right frame of mind. I know for myself, I'm not always in the right frame of mind. But looking around, everyone has things that they go through that are difficult, but everyone makes a choice to be here today. Proverbs 27, verse 17 says that iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So in closing, I'd like to look back at the initial verse we read, When I am weak, then I am strong. I can definitely see this thought in action when I look at my own marriage with Corinne. Uh, without a doubt, a thousand times closer and more bonded since we went through uh, the losses than we were before. While I do not personally feel stronger as an individual, our relationship has grown, and I do feel I'm more prepared to help her and understand her. But again, if that much can be gained through relying on a spouse, how much more powerful could my development been? had I given all my concerns to God. While I may feel weak, myself, our Heavenly Father and His Son are powerful enough to bring peace and strength, and that is what I believe this verse suggests. When we are weak, we need to turn to God, and through Him, only then will we be made strong. With that being said, I do think we need to be careful with what we expect from God. Um, the Bible tells us that every good and perfect thing comes from above. And that does not mean that, that we are truly or really owed anything at all. All that is given is by the grace and mercy of our Father, and we need to center our thoughts on those things rather than questioning what we want or what we don't have. And looking back over the last couple years, um, I would say that my attitude should have definitely been different. Um, never felt more angry, more frustrated. 
uh, became very jaded, uh, and every time we would get a positive test, uh, instead of feelings of excitement, um, all I would feel was, was dread. And again, looking at that, it's, it's difficult to view how God looked at that, right? God gave us blessing after blessing, but because I wasn't satisfied, because it's not what I wanted, I wasn't happy. It wasn't until the last loss that Corinne and I really gave up trying to figure this out for ourselves. Um, we realized that without turning everything over to God, uh, without fully relying on Him, that this just was not going to work out. But fortunately, God has blessed us, and God does bless us every day. Some of the things in life that we ask for could be minor, um, but often they're quite profound. But the end goal is always the same with God, and that is for us to prosper, that is for us to turn to Him, and ultimately serve Him with joy forever. In closing, I'd like to read a couple of passages first one is from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And the last one, I'd like to read from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Thank you.